So my parents' cars have always been lingering in the backgrounds of my videos, but I think it's finally time to share all of them. And I think this is the last of all of the cars in my family. This is my dad's 2010 Acura MDX. Okay, this needs to be at the beginning of the video. I want all of you to count how many times, this is at the beginning of the video, I want all of you to count how many times I get harassed by a cicada. Like now, because they're all over the place. All the cicadas are bothering me. <laughs> uh -oh. oh my God. Like I said, this one in particular is my dad's. It's a 2010 MDX Tech. The tech package is in the middle of the MDX lineup, at least for these refreshed second gens. If I was looking for one of these instead of my XC90, I would try to look for an advanced package MDX because with the features that that has, like heated and cooled seats, blind spot monitor, and a bunch of other little things, it really adds to the luxury feeling of the second gen MDX. This one is a really nice one though. It's in crystal black pearl. It's a nice color, especially when it looks clean, but I think the paint on these Hondas and Acuras are a little bit too soft because I noticed with this, it catches swirls a little bit easier than other cars with the thickness of paint. So my... So my dad has had this MDX for almost three years now. And as some of you may know, he's had a third gen 4Runner before this one. I did post a few videos on the channel about it. I wish I did more with it, but he had it for almost 20 years. It was literally just as old as me. It was a 2001 SR5. It was a nice model. He kept it up until I'd say December of 2018. And then we sold it to one of my friends and it actually got passed on to another friend of mine. and. It has completely evolved into a, an extraordinary vehicle. We sold it at 273,000 miles. It's currently well over 300,000 miles and it's lifted. Anyways, if you wanna see a video of that, let me know in the comments below. The only other three row SUV that my dad was really looking at before he bought this MDX was the second gen Honda Pilot. God, God. <laughs> The second gen Honda Pilot is pretty similar to this, except it uses a 3.5 liter V6 instead of the 3.7 in this one. The Pilot is also a little bit bigger inside because it's boxier, which I like the looks of it. God. And those Pilots use VTM4, which is a reactive system, all wheel drive. And these use super handling all wheel drive, which is a more proactive full time all wheel drive system. So an issue that a lot of used luxury SUVs have is reliability. And that is normally why people go to Lexus and Acura to play it safe, because these are known to be more reliable. So under the hood of every second gen MDX is the same engine. It's a 3.7 liter V6. It makes 300 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. These things are kind of piggish with gas mileage. I think my dad gets like 17 or 18, which is kind of the same as my V8 Volvo XC90, which the V8 and the XC90 would really compare to this because they make kind of the same amount of horsepower and almost the same amount of torque. The XC90 is a little bit up on torque. For the most part, this has been dead reliable to us. It's never left us stranded. It's not really done anything wrong per se. Like I said, it's at 145,000 miles. We did the timing belt and water pump about two years ago at 120,000 miles. We also had to replace the alternator. I think it was about time on that. That was at about 115,000 miles. There is one thing though, these J37 V6s are known, at least not all, some of them, not all of them, are known to consume oil. And this one, 
has almost run itself dry twice already and we take it in and they have no idea what's going on with it we put we fill it we change the oil and put oil back in it 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 runs perfectly fine i so i have no idea okay so here is a tour of the mdx hopefully i don't get harassed by another cicada oh boy <laughs> but first of all what should a name be for this car? In the almost three years that we've had it, I've not found a good name for it. So put that in the comments below. But like I said, this is Crystal Black Pearl. It's the tech package. The base and tech comes with these wheels. The Advance gets nicer wheels. I actually wanted to get the Advance package wheels on this for him, or even the newer MDX wheels, because those really look sharp, just to freshen the look of this car but it does look really nice. You can see the swirls, they're pretty bad. And I'm like, eh, it's okay, you know, it's not a show car. This thing, it's never gone through an electric wash with us, but, because we hand wash it, but it's okay. I actually looked at one of these while I was in the market for my XC90. I stuck to the Volvo just because I like to hang around Volvo and it's a little bit higher off the ground and the XC90 is more truck-like than the MDX. This really drives like a car. I do see people take these off-road, which I'm not sure how good of an idea that is, but eh, they work. They make lift kits and stuff for them. But inside, this has the gray interior. It's held up really well for 100, almost 150,000 miles. The seats look beautiful. They just need a little bit of a cleaning, which is really easy. But this is a minimal amount of wear. It really looks nice. And the interior has aged really well. Since these came out, I never really liked the steering wheel. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not crazy about how it is. It's a four spoke steering wheel. God. But it's a really nice interior. Everything looks modern. This part up here looks like new Acura stuff. But this is kind of when Acura was in their transition phase of going from this interior to their not 2014 MDX interior, but like the older, the fourth gen TL and stuff like that. But it's a really nice interior. He likes the running boards and the roof rack. I like the roof rails and crossbars, but I hate the running boards. I'd take them off if it was my car. The back seat is roomier than my XC90, the second row at least. The second row is roomier than my XC90 uh, by a lot. And you have the climate zone in the back right here instead of in my Volvo. It's in the third row, which doesn't make sense. But something about the third row in these, you can only get in on the passenger side. I'm not going to get in it because I know I don't fit. The third row in this and the XC90 are pretty much the same small and then in the trunk it's a power tailgate but only power going down from here and you can open it with power with the key fob oh my goodness but see the third row it's not terrible but it's more for kids or adults like with no legs but there is this nice little storage compartment under here which i wish my volvo had it's a really reasonable amount of room back here. This is actually bigger than a 2010 Audi. This is actually bigger than a 2010 Audi Q7 inside with all the rows down. More and more on the internet, I've seen a lot of people going off-roading and overlanding with Acuras. Now, super handling all-wheel drive is really good for the snow and on-road. It can be good off-road, but if you stress the system out too much, this, the way how it's designed, can overheat. But surprisingly enough, I see companies making lift kits, people putting big tires, skid plates on these cars. They look cool, but I wouldn't do that. Although, in terms of off-road ability, the MDX has 8.2 inches of ground clearance, 22 degrees of approach angle, and 23 degrees of departure angle. The six speed auto in these that Honda uses has a crawl ratio of 14 to 1. So it's kind of in the middle of everything. It's a little bit lower than Subarus and even the Pilot, but it's not as low as something like a brand new Passport or something with actual four-wheel drive. But as a quick comparison between this and an XC90, this is a lot more on-road focused and tighter and more dynamic than the XC90, while the Volvo is softer and more truck-like. Ah. 
I don't know if I can do this, Dan. Um. God. <laughs> it's so annoying. So annoying. Oh my god. Yep.